imscrew the con on Mardis Marshaka Agus Ninon. So two hours I'm calling on Deputy Jenny Whitmore to move the motion first. Thank you, Last Ken Carla. I move the Garmin motion Margaret. and I'll be sharing my time with my colleagues this Garmin morning. Margaret. They say the time can be a great healer, but for survivors of mother and baby homes, this has not been the case. Instead of healing, survivors have had to learn to live with the pain. They've learned to live alongside a concealed past, a vague, unmanageable, distant life. When the state, many decades later, accepted their responsibility to uncover what was laid hidden for many lifetimes, they did not uncover the truth. Instead, they unearthed more pain, which survivors have been forced to live through again and again. And this pain does not just come from reliving the past, but from actions that are carried out in the present also. The Commission of Investigation in Mother and Baby Homes was supposed to uncover the truth through the testimonies granted by 550 survivors, each detailing and reliving the details of their difficult past. Instead, the Commission's report churned out a series of conclusions not only contested by many survivors, but which displayed insensitive narrative of women calling into question the validity of women's and survivors' experiences. I want to read a few of the excerpts from some of these conclusions and the survivors' responses to them, as presented by Dr Maeve O'Rourke, so that we can all remind ourselves of the power imbalance that still exists, which echoes from another time, and which is clearly reflected in the final report of the Mother and Baby Home Commission, a document that was intended to be a, tr a truth-seeking exercise. These excerpts also serve as a reminder of the importance of providing servers, survivors with valuable time in their search for truth and justice. In the executive summary, the report stated, the institutions under investigation provided a refuge. Survivor said, I do not even know whether he was buried in a coffin. There was never even a kind or sympathetic word spoken to me. In the executive summary in paragraph 11, as stated, there can be no doubt that legal adoption was vastly better outcome than the alternatives previously available. A survivor said, one of the saddest things is the perception of adoption in the past as being the best solution for mother and child. It most certainly was not. I feel personally I have lost so much. I have information, I have photographs, but there is a disconnect, a distance that will forever be there. I missed out on meeting close and extended family members because of the so-called shame of illegitimacy. In the final report, recommendations, paragraph 27, they stated, there were not incarcerated in the strict meaning of the word, but in the earlier years at least, with some justification, they thought that they were. Their survivor said, we were locked in and there was absolutely no way of getting out. Daily life was so bad that I attempted to run away twice with two other girls, but they always found us and brought us back. On the second occasion, we were caught by the police who returned us to the convent. After attempting to gain access to their testimonies to counter the report's conclusions, survivors realized that they had actually been misled again. The Commission had re revealed that they had actually destroyed 550 audio testimonies, which the Commission believed uh, and said was done with the permission of witnesses who had taken part. This is a statement that is heavily contested by survivors. So first survivors' words were twisted to fit into the narrative of a report, and then they were told their words had been erased. But really it didn't even end there. In a strange twist of events that took place over the last week, the Minister for Children revealed that backup files do exist for the recordings. And then late last night at the 11th hour, we find out that the Commission had notified the Department that it had actually retrieved all the backup tapes containing audio recordings from the Confidential Committee and that an IT expert had identified and checked and ensured that by testing a random sample that they had said that they were accessible and audible. This was against a backdrop of media reports where the Commission were quoted as saying that these testimonies should be destroyed and that it was the morally and, the, and legally the right thing to do. Some commentators even stated that the report has already been submitted by the Commission and that should be the end of it. Our Social Democrats motion here today seeks to extend the Commission of Investigation by one year to allow survivors the opportunity to seek answers to their questions. The motion was driven by revelations that survivor testimonies, survivor testimonies had been deleted by the Commission and which was explicitly stated in the final report of the Commission in October. This is an action that was in direct contravention of the 2004 Investigations Act, which states that all evidence received by and all documents created by or for the Commission will be deposited with the Minister upon dissolution of the Commission. 
Survivors need a time to have these actions fully investigated by data protection authorities, need a time to get answers. However, it would now appear that these testimonies are in fact available, despite everything that had been said and documented. I do welcome the fact that these testimonies have been found, and I do acknowledge the efforts of the Minister and the Department to ensure that they were retrieved from the Commission. And I suppose the question now for everyone in this chamber is, is an extension, extension still needed? The short, simple answer to this question is yes, we absolutely do still need an extension to the Commission. Firstly, the Commission has confirmed that all files have been recovered, that a sample of 550 testimonies has been tested. But considering that in October the Commission wrote in the final report that all testimonies had been deleted, a fact they reiterated to Elaine O'Loughlin of the Examiner in January when they confirmed to her that they had destroyed witness recordings and had not made any transcripts. Considering that only last week the Minister stated that the Commission believed they were acting in good faith when they destroyed the testimonies. And considering that only two days ago the Commission were quoted in the media as saying that we are strongly of the view that the recording shouldn't be retrieved for legal and moral reasons. Are we now and are survivors now to take that leap of faith that every single last testimony is available? That they are all intact? that there is no possibility that any survivor, when they go to get access to their own story, will be turned away empty-handed? What happens in one week's time if it's discovered that, in fact, some elements of the testimonies are, in fact, gone? Who is to answer for that? Who will be accountable then? Minister, can you absolutely and categorically stand here today and guarantee that each and every minute of the thousands upon thousands of hours of testimony is safe and available to survivors? In fact, the retrieval of this data is only one element of why the Commission needs to remain in existence. Survivors have many questions about why their testimonies are not, as they believe, accurately reflected in the final report. And without transcripts of their testimonies, it was going to be near impossible for them to prove that this was the case. But the retrieval of their testimonies now means that they can clearly show if there are any discrepancies and if the findings and the recommendations of the report are in line with the evidence presented to the Commission. If this can be determined through the application of a judicial review, an exercise where every individual in Ireland can challenge the decision-making process of a public body. But as so often is the case, the story of, survivors on the sto the story of the survivor's path is punctuated with bureaucratic deadlines. Their next deadline comes when it, the next deadline when it comes to seeking justice is the 11th of April, three months after the publication of the final report, by which time any application for judicial review must be lodged. So my second question to the Minister here today is, can he guarantee that access to a judicial review of the findings of the final report will be available to survivors in the event that the Commission ceases to exist on the 28th of February? Or in fact, does the dis dissolution of the Commission shut down that opportunity for justice for survivors? There has been quite a bit of to and froing going with this issue over the last week, and I want to bring us back to the very simple facts here now. Survivors should enjoy the same rights, the same access to justice as every single person in this state. The dissolution of this Commission will mean that those rights will not be available to survivors. The extension of the Commission is a simple act. It has been done before by Government, it's been done for the benefit of the Commission and for the benefit of the Government, and this time we're asking for it to be done for the benefit of the survivors. And the extension of the Commission will not impact on any of the other work that's happening with regard to uh, the, the work for, for survivors and the redress scheme. It will not delay any of that. It will be completely separate. It will just be another opportunity for survivors to get answers if they so wish. The power is now with the government. Survivors have done what they can, disputed the report's findings, reported to the Gardaí, reported to the Data Protection Commissioner, and they've campaigned to be heard. We have done what we can. The Social Democrats have lodged a bill to extend the Commission, which did not go through. We've written to the Data Protection Commissioner, and we've, we are presenting this motion here today to extend the Commission by one year. The Government has the power to use time, to use time here not as a weapon, but as a reparation, an act of apology, an acknowledgement, and as a confession of the State's role in these women's lives and the lives that were lost to history. Minister, this extension is still needed and time is still running out. Thank you.